level release radar where we recap all the new releases from the week ryan it's been a funky week this week it has been spicy it spicy has week. been spicy <laughs> we're, we're streaming in limited locations right now because our youtube channel got nuked out of nowhere uh so a big thanks to whoever <laughs> participated in that hopefully it'll be back online uh any minute now um, but until then, we will see you. Hopefully, we're seeing you in Facebook <clears throat> and LinkedIn. Speaking of which, let me share us into the Facebook community. Amazing. And as always, if you can see us and you can hear us, please say hello in the comments. We love to see your smiling faces and your... Your comments are our only hope. That's right. We need <clears throat> attention. Give it to us. <laughs> that is right. The high-level release... Restream made this change where you have to like retype it now. Mm. Annoying. Okay. All right. We should be streaming into the community. Um, let me open up our chat just so I can see all the comments as they come in. All right. Awesome. Ryan, I think we're still sort of in that recovery zone from the summit, but we did have some cool releases go out this week. Uh, yes, we've got sir. our first comment from Derek. Hello Amazing. to you, sir. Thanks for saying hi. Um, but how about we hop into some releases, shall we? Let's do it. All right. First up, online listings got an update. We have multi-entity management for locations. Yeah. Which is cool. You want to explain that one? Probably. <laughs> sorry. Probably a better way to say that. Um, think about it this way. You're using the online listings feature uh, with Yext, and you want to be able to uh, you've got multiple uh, business locations. Like maybe you own a few pizza huts, let's just say. Uh, and then you want to have, you want to track the online listings for multiple locations. It's the same company, right? But there's just different, um, different places that that business might exist. And so this gives you the ability to manage that, um, both adding them and then looking at all the stats individually for, for each location. Yeah. That's great. I mean, yeah. I've seen a bunch of people want to do this and now you can manage multiple listing entities, I guess, in the same location. <laughs> yeah. AKA sub account. And then nice this one. is just a breakdown of the graph. So you can see there on the right hand side, you can switch between the different locations and then get ah. all the stats for that. Nice. Yeah. And a nice, uh, a nice call out to the new design and the new reporting there as well. It looks great. Looks lovely. Um, next up, Ad Manager got an update. You can now cancel it in-app. If you'd like to cancel it in-app, don't oh. see why you would want to. But if you did need to, you can. And Invoicing in Estimates got updates. We have new status edition for estimates and workflows. Yeah. Import product description to estimates and enhanced limit on product description in estimates. Yeah. Nice. So there's a... Uh... There's a couple of couple of different slides. Um, I went with the bolding to highlight what we're talking about on the right there. Um, viewed is this new status for, or it's new filter status for um, invoices and estimates, or for estimates um, specifically. So that way you can you can trigger a workflow based on the fact that they viewed it, right? So um, you can imagine all the great stuff you could do with that, making sure that they get a follow-up, uh, they have any questions about the estimate, they want to go over anything, mm -hmm. um, that type of that type of thing, maybe a, set up a reminder to call them a few days uh, later if they have not yet um, approved the estimate and so forth. So great addition there, small but mighty. And then on the next slide, um, we've got an image of the import product description to estimates. So you have products set up right under payments and mm -hmm. you want to create an estimate, well, now it will bring in the product description that you have into the estimate. Of course, you can make edits if you'd like, uh, but a nice uh, quality of life update for working in estimates and not having to you know, write a new description for one that already exists. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, and then the last one um, is just that we increased, the, we increased the character limit. So big feature update there. You get lots, <laughs> lots of characters. Quadruple Who doesn't love a little more room to express themselves <laughs> in your yeah. invoices and estimates? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. All three updates are very nice. Invoicing and estimates. If you haven't tried this out, I mean, this suite of proposals, 
we got the builder, we've got invoicing, we've got estimates, we've got it all in there now. So if you haven't tried it out, I would encourage you to check it out. Um, it's great. You should be able to ditch some more software along the way. Yes, Next up, dashboards have real-time multi-currency support for invoices and estimates. This yeah. one I saw, but I didn't dig into. It seems pretty interesting. Is this doing conversions on the fly? Yeah, or so essentially I requested some more details from the team because I used to deal with exchange rates a lot. Um, but we have an API that we hit uh, to get the live exchange rate for a given currency. And then it automatically updates in real time the value that you're looking at. So if you let's just say that you're in the US, maybe you're in Buffalo, New York, and you sell a lot to some Canadians, they're paying in Canadian dollars, but you're doing your accounting and, and your reporting in US dollars, it will automatically convert those sales into US dollars for the um, for the reporting end of it, so that you're looking at what you're actually getting. Wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's it's pretty fancy. Um, and I think sometime we're gonna have to learn a little bit more about your past with, uh, whoa, what happened here? With your working in different currencies, Ryan, you're really an international man of mystery here. Every week, yeah. it's like we, we'll, we'll we learn it a little way. bit more. Little by little, we'll reveal. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, that's a pretty cool update. Invoice has got another update, ACH payment date when payment is processing. Okay. Yeah, that's so let's just say you're the in, the invoice is being processed and they decided to pay with ACH. By the way, there's a cool update there um, that I'll kind of tease where you, you can enable like only ACH if you want for some of the larger purchases if you want to avoid credit cards, credit card fees. Um, but when it's going through the ACH payment, um, and it's processing, it will show you the, the payment date there at the bottom. So just giving you more details in terms of when things are happening and, and what's going on with, with a particular invoice. So you don't have to di you know, dive into the back end of the payment processor and figure all these things out. It'll just be right there at your finger fingertips. Nice. Mm -hmm. More info, more intel is always a good thing. Yep. Um, invoice has got another update you can view from the invoice list without having yeah. to what click in and then go yeah so before really that would like when you clicked into an invoice it would take you into the editor and then you would have to click view and so this shortcuts that whole process so if you've got sent invoices uh or particularly paid invoices um that's what this is going to show up on you click the three dots and now you've got the the view option nice love it who doesn't yeah. love a reduced click anywhere you can find it Social Planner got an update. YouTube Shorts limit has been increased to three minutes, which is pretty cool. You can now upload longer shorts to YouTube. Yeah, so this is a um, an update that went live in October for YouTube itself. And so now we're, we're making that connection. So we no longer throw errors if it's over one minute, um, but of course under three minutes. So mm -hmm. that's the update there. Very cool. Yeah. Um, Social Planner's got another update. We have enhanced approval handling. Yeah. So kind of hard to illustrate this, but the basic idea is that let's say you've got uh, someone who does all the approvals for the social media posts. You go in and you submit it and then maybe that, that user leaves the company or they're in a different role and they get deleted. Well, what happens? Now we have really nice error handling where with the click of a button, you can select a new approver um, and send that right to them. So that's kind of just mm -hmm. showing the workflow there, but it, it's very intuitive um, way to kind of handle issues where the approver is no longer uh, in that sub account or, or a, a listed user. Wow, nice. That's a little, yeah. a pretty fine improvement there. Yeah. Pretty granular, nice. Um, I'm, <clears throat> I'm gonna backtrack here because I'm super excited. Hopefully you all saw that you can now schedule categories of posts and it will like randomize between them. Love to hear your feedback. I think that is really a huge leap forward for the social planner. So if you haven't tested it out, definitely give it a whirl. There's one more there's one more thing on the social planner just to be aware of um, kind of a power user thing, but we've improved the, the way that the URLs are handled so that when you hit when you're doing some edits or whatever and you go back, mm. it, it has like an actual URL. So it goes back and saves all the filtering and all the stuff that's set up. Um, and then you could, you know, if you're a real power user, you can actually edit um, some of the variables that are in the URL, like the date range and stuff like that. So um, again, power users rejoice. There's a lot of really cool stuff there for you. 
Yeah, that'll be a nice quality of life for the folks that know what we're talking about. Yeah. I think the first time they, they hit that back, they're going to be like, aha, nice. Here we go. <laughs> so nice little back end update there. Um, documents and contracts. The dynamic floating element has been massively improved. Do you want to describe yeah. sort of what so, used to happen? So and what this is a bit now? of a fix, but what, what was happening before is that when you inserted um, this floating element, like a, like a signature um, field, and then maybe you thought, oh, well, I got to add a paragraph or an image above this, um, it would stick to sort of an absolute value or an absolute location on that page and it wouldn't move with it. Now it dynamically moves with where it was anchored. So mm -hmm. that's uh, probably expected behavior. Um, if you've ever worked in Google Docs or anything, it would work similar to that. But probably uh, pretty challenging to fix from a, uh, an engineering perspective. When I saw that, I was like, man, that probably was uh, a complex task for somebody, but much appreciated whoever made that fix. Yeah. Um, Great work. Yeah. Awesome job to the team on that one. Client Portal got an update. We have customization for child apps. So this yes. is like way more control over all the communications that go out, right? Exactly. Yeah. That That's probably what that title should have been is that essentially all the emails that get sent out um, through the child apps and child apps would be things like the affiliate manager, communities, groups, uh, courses, things of that nature. That's what a child app is. Um, and so now you've got full control over all the emails that go out there. So like on the next screen, you can see you click on the customize button and you get you get to choose what template you want to send out there. So that will sync with all the templates that are in the marketing um, email templates. And then you can, of course, click the edit button and go right into the editor and make changes to that specific template. So a ton more control over all the emails, notifications and so forth that are getting sent out. I think initially this was sort of a, hey, can we can we do a little bit of customization so it doesn't send them an email here or there? The team went a step further and introduced you know full customization of everything, which is insanely helpful. Yeah, incredibly helpful. Great job to the team. Way more customization, which is obviously what we want when we're building our communities. So you can now control all that communication. Um, oh, this is great. So this actually launched at summit or did this launch yeah i think it yeah. level up right mm -hmm. so i just wanted to call this out because if you are using the premium actions and workflows there's actually a um a bundle plan in there for like to you it's 10 bucks you can mark it up if you want but you get i think is it fifty thousand? no ten thousand premium actions for yeah. that price which when you do the math puts it like way cheaper than you know make and other platforms out there that you might be using third party to run those types of actions so this is the agency level setting but you can in sub accounts find it in the global workflow settings at the very bottom of that page i believe i suggested the team that they move it to the top um <laughs> But if you're using premium actions, you probably want to go check this out because you can save yourself a bunch of money by taking advantage of that bundle offer there. Um, where are my slides at? Oh, man, Ryan, <laughs> what a gift this week. Any other Lebowski fans out there? <laughs> um, <laughs> let's roll. We've got some righteous upcoming releases. Let's see what we are excited about. I haven't seen these yet, so let's see what Ryan's excited about coming down the pipe. We've got the new and improved inbox. This one I am very excited for as well. It just looks so nice and so clean. Yeah, we're we're getting we're getting closer and closer to email client parity, uh, which is always great to see. Um, I think everybody's going to be very pleased with the way this looks and feels compared to kind of how we started way back in the day where we are now. Um, but yeah, the inboxes will be super usable now. Um, and this one's coming really pretty soon, right? Yeah. I believe, it's, uh, it was almost a level up item from what I recall. Yeah, it, it definitely was. And it was on, on the deck there. But uh, yes, this is coming super soon. Excellent. Um, another coming soon is bounce classification, which is gets pretty granular, but um, yeah. pretty cool for everybody who's you know really on top of their deliverability. Yeah, if you're, if you're working in email deliverability, this is a very useful thing to be able to know why it bounced, not just it was a soft bounce or a hard bounce or that. Um, 
So, and even if you're just kind of starting to get into it, it's good to understand like what's happening with certain emails and, and that. And again, more and more of just bringing relevant information right where you need it uh, within the app. You're going to see a ton more of this uh, as time goes on here. Absolutely. All right. Well, that was our last update of the week. As always, we'd love to know what your favorite update from this week was and what you're excited to see roll down um, down the line. We will catch you guys next Friday. But until then, have a great weekend, everybody. Ryan, you want to send us off? Uh, stay tuned midweek next week. We've got some exciting stuff. I'll just tease that. Um, but yeah, super excited to see everybody again uh, on YouTube soon. And can't wait for next week. See you guys. Nice tease there. It is going to be an exciting week next week. So we will see you then. Bye, everybody.